All right. Good morning, everybody. And uh, thank you for jumping on this Zoom call this morning. We appreciate it. Um, and we are so excited about uh, getting ready for the 2023 camp season and that you and your units are going to be joining us at Kerr Scout Ranch at Slippery Falls uh, for summer camp. So uh, if you uh, just a couple of housekeeping items, uh, we've gotten asked this question a lot the last several days. Um, so if you have unit leaders that weren't able to join us this morning, uh, then that is okay because we are recording, uh, as you may have heard, uh, we are recording this uh, Zoom call uh, so that we can get it out uh, to leaders and such uh, as, uh, and you can view it uh, as many times as you want. Uh, if you have trouble sleeping at night, then just turn this on and and let the, uh, the camp leadership of of the Kerr staff uh, put use their dulcet tones to put you right to sleep. Uh, so we'll get underway here. Um, if you have a question, um, we're going to use the uh, chat uh, feature uh, in Zoom. So if you'll just drop that question in there, uh, we'll make sure and address it towards the end of our time together this morning. Um, and so let's get going. First, uh, make a couple of introductions. Uh, I am Carl Hanke. I'm the Director of Support Service for the Last Frontier Council. Um, and uh, it is my privilege to serve you um, as the professional advisor for uh, both Per Scout Ranch at Slippery Falls and our Cub Resident Camp facility at Camp George Thomas. Also with me, who you'll be hearing from later, uh, is Mike Ballard, who is our camp director uh, for this summer. And also in the room with us uh, is Christian Mosier, who is our program director uh, for this summer. Um, so we, uh, we're all very excited to uh, be with you this morning and thank you so much for choosing Kerr Scout Ranch at Slippery Falls for your summer camp experience. Um, so you can see here some of the key communication links. This slide will come back up uh, at the end of the presentation. So if you don't quite get uh, the office number or Mike's cell number or his email address, uh, then certainly it'll come back around. But uh, you can see here our last Frontier Council office. Um, we're open uh, nine to five, uh, Monday through Friday. Um, Mike is available during those times as well. Um, and you can call him uh, or email him uh, at the contact information that's on the screen. Like I said, this will come back uh, up at the end of our presentation. Uh, and so, I uh, just want to make sure that uh, you get ample chances to to jot that down or take a picture um, so that you've got all the communication links uh, for any questions that you might have for camp. All right, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Mike for a minute uh, and let him introduce some of the, the rest of our uh, camp leadership and area directors. So I'll turn it over to you, Mike. Yes, once again, I want to echo Carl and thank everyone for uh, each and every one of y'all for choosing Kerr Scout Ranch for your summer camp experience. Uh, basically, like I said, I'm Mike Ballard. I'm going to be the camp director. Uh, Thomas Long is going to be the assistant camp director. And for those of you that's been at our camp before, you'll remember him as our frontiersman director. He's been there for a few years. Cole James is going to be the business manager. He was our commissioner last year. Uh, Christian Moser is going to be our program director, and he's been our uh, horse guy uh, for the last few years. And Erin uh, White, she was the climbing instructor last year. She's going to be our assistant program director. Uh, John Burdick, Aquaman, is going to be our aquatics director once again. AJ is going to be our climbing guru, and uh, he's been he's been there for a few years. Jeff Johnson's going to be our camp commissioner this year, and uh, Deputy Dog Bill Jacobs is going to be our shooting sports director once again. All 
All right. Thanks, Mike. So like I say, we have a, we actually, after this Zoom call, uh, we have a staff meeting this afternoon uh, with our summer camp staff, uh, just to continue making preparations uh, for a great summer this summer. So here are our goals uh, for camp this summer. We want to have a safe, healthy camp experience, uh, and that involves everybody uh, from when y'all are getting ready to get on the bus or the van or the car, um, you know, make sure that everybody's feeling well um, and isn't doing anything like having a, a cough or a fever um, that's, you know, uh, bothersome. Uh, we want to make sure that we we have not, you know, knock on wood, uh, the past two years have not had any uh, major COVID uh, outbreaks uh, or anything at camp. Um, and we want to continue that. And so uh, work with us to make sure that we have a safe, healthy camp experience. Um, let's see. Uh, we want to have uh, quality instruction uh, and we are completion focused. One of the things that will be coming to you probably sometime this week, uh, once we get it uh, wrapped up, is a list of all the prerequisites uh, for every merit badge that we're offering this summer, so that if your scouts want to work on those prerequisites and bring verification that they have completed those, uh, our merit badge counselors have no problem signing off the completion for that merit badge. So uh, if, you know, like I said, they just have to have good verification that they have done whatever the prerequisite is, like for, you know, the camping merit badge, you know, or not camping, cooking merit badge, you know, that's kind of in three parts. So if they've done the at home and the the outdoor cooking piece or the backpacking piece, because the outdoor cooking is what we're going to do at camp, um, then we're happy to sign those off. Uh, if they can show us verification photos of what they cooked, the menu plan, um, you know, receipts of going to the store and purchasing the food, um, stuff like that. So we want to make sure that that scouts have the opportunity to walk away with completions for as many completions as they can. Third, we want to be fun and inspirational. You know, it, camp is supposed to be fun. Uh, and we're going to have a great time uh, this summer. And so uh, we just ask that you help us uh, get your scouts uh, engaged as quickly as possible once you're on site. Um, and then our final goal is that we want to make every troop, every leader, every scout fans of Kerr Scout Ranch at Slippery Falls. We have a great summer camp program, and we want to make sure that that people get to experience that. Um, and we want to make sure that you go back to uh, your districts and your councils uh, and tell people about the great experience that you had with us. Um, and that comes down from, you know, to customer service, to our communication, to the actual physical uh, logistics and and dining services and all that stuff that go into a week of camp. So those are our goals uh, for the summer. And so uh, we have a couple of of operations updates uh, with uh, with some of the things that we're going to be doing. Um, so I'm going to turn it over uh, very quickly uh, to Let's see, uh, Mike, why don't you talk about Sunday check-in? Um, I did see that Cole jumped on. Uh, so Cole here, once Mike is done, why don't you talk a little bit about Trading Post and meals? Um, I'll talk about Black Pug. And then Christian, if you'll talk about merit badges and merit badge schedules, uh, then uh, we'll go from there. So Mike, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Carl. Basically, uh, when when you get there, uh, check-in times is from one to three. Now, if you happen to be a few minutes early or a few minutes late, that's not going to be a problem. But basically, one to three is the check-in time. 
uh, the scoutmaster or acting scoutmaster will go into the welcoming center, the reception center uh, that we'll have set up, and it'll be it'll be real easy to find. Uh, while he is there doing the first stage of the check-in process with the paperwork and everything, uh, the rest of the troop with their troop guide will go to your uh, designated uh, campsite, uh, do what you can uh, to set up your camp. Once the scoutmaster or acting scoutmaster is done with his part, he will go to the camps, he or she will go to the campsite and then the troop guide will take you on a uh, tour of the camp. Uh, so basically, if you're going to be doing your swim check, uh, you probably should be in your swimming wear, uh, swimsuits. Uh, they will also take you to get a health check, go through the health check process. You'll uh, learn where the, if you don't know already, where the trading post, health lodge, dining hall, kitchen, and a few certain area directors will be giving their their uh, introduction speech speeches to you so you kind of learn what kind of what to expect throughout the week and uh we've made it uh, we've been working since la end of last summer making the process even better than it was last year so there shouldn't there will not be any major holdups or anything on our end god willing and the creek don't rise yes sir all right let's kick it over to cole um, to talk a little bit about trading post, Cole. All right, so nice to be here with all of you today. Um, so, with regards to trading post, not a whole lot's changing from previous years. Um, we have a if you have not been there, we just have a big building or a moderately sized building. Um, it, it's really just a standard trading post, um, but we're going to be open for more hours this year. We're going to have more inventory of different things. Um, and the big thing is that I'm going to try to put together a trading post catalog uh, to get out to everybody before camp starts. That way, if your scouters want to buy a shirt or a hat or something like that, they know how much money to bring for a little uh, item like that. Um, that's all there really is for trading post. Uh, with regards to meals, um, all except for like two meals are provided by the camp. Uh, Wednesday meals, uh, Wednesday dinners, pardon me, is what we call inner troop campfire night. So your troop eats together. You don't eat with the staff or with the camp. Um, the camp can provide you a meal or you can do your own meal. You just have to let the office know whenever you're at camp. And with regards to Friday night, we have a big fancy meal. Uh, where guests are allowed to come, so you'll just need to let the trading or the <clears throat> office know how many guests you're going to have come. Yeah, I think that's about it for trading post and meals. Okay, great. Thank you, Cole. Uh, just to add a little bit to that. So Wednesday night, um, if we do have some troops that elect to leave camp uh, and go into the greater Tishomingo uh, Metroplex, uh, to get something to eat, um, or even going as far as Medill or Ardmore or Ada. Um, so if you want to do that meal out, that's fine. You just need to make sure and, uh, you just need to make sure and let the office know what your intent is. Um, and then the other, like Cole said, you can bring your own uh, food uh, to prepare in your campsite, or you can. We can provide a a meal. Um, not exactly sure what that meal is going to be uh, just yet. We're working to finalize the menu uh, with our camp chefs uh, right now, um, and so <clears throat> once we once we have an idea of what that's going to look like, we'll we'll put that out for you. Um, and then, of course, on Friday night. Uh, we have our our family night, uh, which is an opportunity for families to come uh, and participate in the evening activities. Uh, we do have a charge uh, for those guest meals. Um, it's five dollars and fifty cents per per person, um, and so those <clears throat> you'll you'll let us know um, during the week, your week of camp, preferably earlier in the week. 
how many guests you anticipate coming. Um, and then you can either pay for all your guests all at once, or if you want to have them come into the trading post and pay uh, for their meals, then that's, that's fine too. Um, so, all right, we're going to talk about black pug, uh, a little bit. Um, so <clears throat> the, the first thing I'll say is that merit badges are open. Um, so for any of you that have not gone in and selected merit badges for your scouts, um, please go in and do that. Um, and the requirement to open up those merit badges is that you have at least a hundred dollars per scout uh, paid in, uh, to the system, uh, in order to open up the merit badge, uh, scheduling. And so, um, let's see, I sent, uh, an email to all of the registration contacts. So if you did not receive an email from me with videos, um, from black pug about how to work in that system, if you're not familiar, uh, then, you may follow up with your committee chairman or whoever did the registration for um, uh, for camp. Um, if you registered for camp in the last probably 60-ish days, um, then I'm going to include that information in the follow-up email from this Zoom call. Um, so if you did not receive it um, and don't receive it, say by Monday afternoon, uh, then, you know, just reach out to us. Um, and I'll, I'll drop my, I'll drop my email, uh, in the chat, uh, at, towards the end of our time together. Um, so you have my email as well. So, um, with black pug, um, just, there is the option, uh, to pull reports, um, you can pull a financial report. You can pull your unit roster uh, to see who you've got actually registered for camp. Uh, you can also, once you've made those merit badge selections, you'll be able to pull class schedules and kind of look at at where your scouts are going to be uh, throughout the day <clears throat> so that you can work out buddy pairs and and all that stuff uh, as as you're preparing for camp. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Christian to talk about our merit badge program and merit badge schedule and balancing classes. Good morning, everybody. So today I'm going to talk to y'all about the merit badges. Uh, there's only a few changes, really. We are adding a few new ones. So we are going to be adding woodworking, uh, railroading, chess, to name a few. Um, for those merit badges, you can sign up for them normally. Some of them, like uh, woodworking, will have a charge, so do be on the watch for that. Um, let's see, outpost, it is going to be a thing this year. We do have the person hired up for that. So if y'all have any questions, y'all can just shoot us a text or let us know through the chat system, and we'll answer those at the end. Um, otherwise, merit badge sign up, he's already kind of talked about it. You just go on to Black Pug and you do your sign up through there. That'll show you where the merit badges are available and when they're available. There are six class periods in a day. Some of the merit badges do take two of those class periods. Um, so you'll kind of just kind of want to keep an eye on that. Um, let's see. Uh, golf. We are going to be asking if any of you are interested in teaching golf. If you want to bring your golf clubs, um, We'll only really need like one or two people a week to do that. Uh, we'll have somebody who can guide you through that and tell you exactly what all you'll need to do when you get to camp. Um, but that's going to be the only merit badge that we're looking to ask for help with. The rest of them, our staff will be able to cover. Um, we've made sure to hire on a decent portion of our staff, uh, pre-trained and everything. The ones that are new, we're training up today um, and during staff week to make sure that they've got all the knowledge that they need. Um, I don't believe I can think of anything else that I need to really talk about at the moment, but if y'all got any questions, just put them in the chat. So great. Great. And I see that we've got several, several questions in the chat. We will address those at the end um, here. So just, just hold tight um, and, and we'll get to those here directly. Okay. So we talked a little bit about <clears throat> our special programs in Friday evening. Um, so we've also 
put out our request for leader assistance. Um, and so I'm going to, I'm going to jump a little out of order here and talk about our future updates. And then I'll kick it back to Mike uh, to talk about these other two items. Um, so one of the things that, uh, you know, summer camp at Kerr Scout Ranch at Slippery Falls is our only main summer camp facility that we run for Scouts BSA. Um, we have our Cub Resident Camp facility at Camp George Thomas, um, and we run activities through some of our other properties, but but Kerr Scout Ranch is our main summer camp facility. Um, and so we've made some improvements already and are looking to, to put in some more. Uh, we've done some road work. So for those of you that joined us last summer, um, you will not get the thrill of the roller coaster ride coming into camp. Um, I know that might be disappointing for some of you, um, but it helps us keep uh, keep food on the table for the Benny Keith truck um, and and helps our some of our other uh, program areas make sure that they don't get stuck with trailers and, and things um, trying to get into camp. And so we did that work. Um, we're looking now. Uh, to, we're also going to redo some of our showers uh, in the central shower house. Um, and so for those of you that will get to use those, that'll be uh, hopefully a great experience for you. Um, and we also uh, go and jump back a little bit to the road work. Uh, we also cut a road uh, to better assist if there's an emergency situation at aquatics Um not that we're we're hoping for that by any means, but just to be prepared for uh, in the in the case of of somebody needing to get an emergency vehicle down to aquatics, um, we've got that infrastructure already built. And so now um, we're about to uh, our council is about to step off into a capital campaign. And so, uh, and camp is is Kerr Scout Ranch is on the list of of projects. Um, so some of those projects that we've kind of laid out um, are putting in an amphitheater um, near the ranch house. Uh, also looking for uh, a proper horse facility um, that we can do more things with our horse program. Uh, we also are looking at putting in a nature center. Uh, on camp just to give a better depth uh, and overall quality of program uh, for uh, those merit badges. And so uh, those are some of the things that we're looking at uh, in the future. And so just wanted to give you those updates. And now I'm going to turn it on to, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mike to talk about our Friday evening program um, and any special programming that he wants to talk about at this point. And um, if there's Mike, if there's anything else with uh, that our leaders can do to help have a great week of camp, uh, I'll look for that at this time as well. So Mike, take it away. Okay. Uh, basically our, uh, our Friday night campfire. Uh, some of you may know, some of you may not know, but our theme this year is going to be the history of the old West. So I've been working on, uh, one good thing about being retired from the military is I'm still young enough and I have all the free time, most free time in the world. So I've been working on it since last August, uh, the closing campfire, and we've got, it's going to be a dandy. So hopefully some of y'all have a sense of humor and everything, and it's going to be great. Uh, basically Friday night uh, after dinner, uh, I believe six o'clock or so, we're going to be doing the awards uh, ceremony. Uh, basically, anybody that, uh, for example, the uh, Scoutmaster Cookoff champion, the SBL Scoutmaster shooting champion, et cetera, if you earned a special award or anything, that's when you'll be getting your awards. Uh, we're going to add a few more uh, events. Uh, some of them we used to do, some of them will be brand new, but for example, uh, we're bringing back the volleyball tournament. Uh, I believe that's Monday evening when we'll be doing the volleyball. So whoever the troop champion is, you, and you do not have to participate if your troop doesn't want to participate, that's fine, but 
Uh, the troop champion will receive a special award Friday evening. Uh, and then the troop champion, uh, if they choose to uh, play the staff G team, uh, that will be on Thursday. Uh, time to be announced at, at the first uh, leaders meeting on the uh, camp Sunday evening. Uh, let's see. Then from uh, after that, after the award ceremony, we're going to have a short OA ceremony. Uh, hopefully our OA team will be there. If not, I have members of staff that has already said they'll step up in case something happens where the OA can't be there. So that won't be an issue. It'll be a short one. If you have someone in your troop that is uh, OA or needs a ceremony or a tap out, uh, we can do that there if you choose, if you'd like us to. And then from there, we'll we will do our official closing campfire, and uh, that will start roughly around seven seven thirty. Uh, and it will last roughly 45 and a half minutes. Uh, let's see, I believe that's uh, believe that's it. Uh, as far as special events or programs, uh, for those of you that's been at our camp before, if you happen to be there usually during the third or fourth week, that was really the only week that would see something special out of the ordinary because that's usually when staff does their staff Christmas and you'd hear a few Christmas songs and everything. Well, this year, no matter what week you're there, Wednesday will be a different holiday. So that will be something out of the ordinary. Should be kind of fun. Uh, the one thing I would like to mention that if you've been there in the, if you've been at our camp before, uh, usually the leaders meeting was right before dinner. We're going to change that to uh, right after breakfast so the our area directors have time to be there. Um, the only time that it will be in the evening will be uh, Sunday, and that will be uh, after dinner. And uh, we, of course, we'll make that announcement and everything, so that won't be a big deal. Uh, one thing I do want to stress on is drink water. Start drinking water before you get to camp. When you're driving into camp and then somebody remembers to take a swig of water, that's a little too late. Uh, we don't want your first day. We want your whole week, especially your check-in process, to go smoothly and, and be fun and everything. But it's kind of hard to do when someone's in the health lots because they haven't been drinking water. So please drink water. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Mike. Um, one, I'll just make two uh, other points with some of that. If you do have, if you're not from the Last Frontier Council uh, and you're visiting us this summer, um, if you have scouts that you need to be called out for the order of the arrow, um, please make sure that you get a letter uh, from your home lodge uh, with the names uh, saying that they that those scouts have been elected uh, to the order of the arrow. Um, that just helps us make sure that everybody is on the same page. Uh, the other thing I'll, I'll, I'll echo Mike's comments is please drink water. Like a week out, start drinking water. Encourage your scouts to really make it a point to start drinking water. Um, it, it does get warm uh, at Per Scout Ranch. And so we just want to make sure that everybody's uh, again, safe and healthy uh, as a part of their week of camp. Okay. So again, this is uh, our contact information. I'm going to leave this up and we'll go ahead and start going through some of these uh, wonderful questions uh, that um, uh, people have Asked. And so let's see any COVID paperwork or COVID tests required for summer camp. No, not at this point. Um, our, the state of Oklahoma has not had any additional uh, protocols that have come out. Um, so the, the answer to that question uh, is no, there's not any paperwork, additional paperwork or tests that are required um, for COVID. Um Again, it's just, you know, your best, your best judgment, um, you know, 
kid is about to get on the on the bus and you know doesn't appear to feel very well um you know you may want to check their temp um but there's nothing that we require uh, at this point and should that change i don't think it will uh, but should that change um uh, that will uh, we'll communicate that out as soon as we know something. Um, okay, next question. Uh, don't don't see an option to remove youth or adults from the black pug if needed. Um, correct. <laughs> that is, uh, uh, if you will, and here, I'll drop it in the chat here. Um, if you will shoot me an email. Make sure I spelled everything right. Um, if you will uh, drop me an email, if you need to remove participants uh, from your roster, uh, then we can certainly do that. Um, now, <clears throat> once we get inside two weeks of camp, um, then you'll have to go through the, the formal written, we'll need something in writing uh, about why a participant is not able to attend camp uh, to determine a refund. Uh, but like I say, that's, we're still a little ways out from that. Um, okay. As far as completions, prerequisites, do we need to go back and look at the report later? If there are none now, um, so you'll get a report at the end of camp with the requirements that have been completed during your week of camp. Um, and if scouts have that verification uh, to the prerequisites, it will be included. So, you know, let's say that I'm just going to pick a random one here, uh, that there was a prerequisite for, um, you know, basket weaving. Um, and the scout did it and showed the showed the merit badge counselor that they were able to complete it, uh, then it's going to be marked as a completion on the reports that you receive at the end of camp. Um, so, uh, again, Christian, Mike, did I cover that appropriately? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to have Mike or Christian answer this next one. What will be involved with health check during our tour of camp? Uh, obviously, basically, uh, the one, the most important thing you need is your uh, everyone's physical that is going to be at camp for longer than 23 minutes. Uh, if you don't have your physical, that is a big pile of boo. Uh, please make sure that the, the scouts as well as the adults have their physicals there. Please keep them together so when you do uh, get there, we're going for health checks. We're not spending 48 minutes looking for all the physicals. Uh, another thing is if you have anyone uh, that's allergic to any type of food uh, ingredient or a, di a serious diabetic or anything like that, Please have that information already uh, made up so you can hand it to uh, the doctor or whoever's there doing the med check because we need to get that to our shifts as soon as possible. The last thing I want is somebody that's allergic to peanut butter or armadillo or whatever it is, they don't get sick and then we have to take them to the ER. We do not want that to happen. So if you have any uh, special uh, eating uh needs that you need, please uh, just have that already made up so it just makes our job easier and the cooks are not having to recook uh, people's meals. Right, right. And if you want to share that, um, if you want to share that prior to camp, um, you can email that to Mike um, ahead of time. Uh, it actually states in the leader's guide that if you can get that to us a week out from when you are attending camp, uh, that that helps us immensely uh, make sure that we're prepared for scouts that have dietary restrictions or adults that have dietary restrictions, um, or if there's uh, some type of allergen. Uh, so, 
Um, okay, next question. Is there cold storage available if we bring our own Wednesday night supplies for dinner? Yes. Uh, please make sure that they are labeled um, with your troop number and your campsite uh, so that it's real easy to for us to just or to have your scouts come up and grab it when you need it. Um, so uh, eating uh, options uh, in Tish, um, you know, there's a uh, there's Blake Shelton's restaurant, uh, Old Reds. Um, there's a Boomerang Diner, um, which has got you know breakfast, hamburgers. It's diner food. Um, there's a Mexican restaurant. Um, there's a Subway. There's a Subway. There's a Sonic. There's a Simple Simon's Pizza. Um, so <clears throat> certainly, uh, if you're looking to leave camp. Uh, then that's all available to you. Um, and so <laughs> we'll see if we can put together uh, some kind of list um, and get that out. Uh, Christian, I'm, I'm looking at you. Um, so, uh, and see if we can't get that out uh, before camp. Uh, so that if that is something that you want to do, uh, then you have those, those options. Um, so, all right. Uh, t-shirts in the training post. Are there any shirts as part of the camp fees? No, there are not, um, this time. Um, so, uh, we are, Cole is working diligently, uh, to get the catalog out so that scout you and your scouts can see what's going to be available. Um, so that families can plan, uh, how much spending money to send, uh, with with their scout um but we do not have any uh shirts that are a part of uh the the camp fee at this point um you will get a, a patch um as part of uh spending a week with us and and getting to participate in all the fun program um if the camp provides a wednesday meal is there an extra cost no um there is not so uh if if we provide the meal uh there's no additional fees with any of that um okay uh christian i'm going to give you this next one what is outpost so outpost is going to be a program for the older scouts mostly it's directed towards scouts that are currently working on their eagle or have already gotten their eagle um the outpost youth will be camping with their troop just because there are uh, YPT uh, concerns with like overnight camping away from everybody because then we need to find a over 21 female and other things like that. So just to make it a little simpler for now until we've got it going a little more, um, it is going to be outpost camping with their units. Um, but the outpost kids, what they'll do is when they get here, they will uh, decide what programs they want to enjoy a little more so they can choose to go boating. They can choose to go up to the horse barn, do some horse activities. They can choose to go to the climbing tower, do some climbing activities, go to the shooting ranges, uh, things along those lines. It's mostly they get to decide when they get here what sort of high activity, like high adventure activities they're doing at camp. So it's it's a program for them. That's yeah, that's right, Christian. Um, as an example, we did have scouts last summer uh, that they took kayaks and kayaked Pendleton Creek. Um, and so, uh, you know, because uh, that is a navigable waterway um, that comes through our, our camp. Uh, and so uh, that's just an example of some of the um, uh, activities activities that they can elect to participate in all right christian you're you're a popular guy right now um so uh questions or, or i guess give us an overview of frontiersman which is our first class trail program so frontiersman um they're going to be just working through the first class they'll be doing the fireman chip and the totem chip uh there so if your scouts don't have it they can also take that during twilight um 
if you've got any specific questions, if you can please put them in the chat. Um, but mainly they'll be doing their five mile hike. They'll have a day where they go down to aquatics and do their swimming requirements, uh, things like that. So if you just want to send me a more detailed question, I can answer that. Okay. Perfect. Uh, is the Friday night campfire open to guests? Yes, uh, absolutely. If they um, just remember that if you're going to have guests that are going to eat with us, um, that there is a there is a fee uh, to cover the cost of their meal. Um, and so <clears throat> we just want to make sure. Uh, but yes, absolutely. Uh, please uh, invite people. Uh, we want uh, parents and families to be able to see all the hard work that their scout has done over the week. Uh, so please make sure that uh, that invitation goes out. Um, again, my email is here in the chat. Um, I'll, uh, I'll also uh, drop uh, Christian's email in the chat. So if you have program questions, uh, more specific program questions, then you can do that as well. Um, okay. Other than A, B, and C medical forms, is there anything else special required? Uh, went to Colorado last summer. Um, well, it's a shame that you didn't come see us. Um, and uh, they needed four extra forms with history of everything medical. Uh, no, the the required uh, for our camp is the parts A, B, and C of the annual health and medical record. Um, please make sure that it is, in fact, the Part C that is signed by the doctor. We do not accept uh, football physicals or any other uh, school physicals that you may have. It's got to be on that on that Part C form. Um, so let's see. Uh, does my leader need a uniform uh, if she is a committee member? Um, I mean, we do ask that everybody's in uniform for dinner. Um, and so, you know, just to be sure, uh, you know, it can be a, a uniform uh, that doesn't have a lot of stuff on it. You know, uh, you know, you don't have to walk around uh, like a, uh, a general uh, with patches and knots and everything, you know, medals and all that stuff hanging off. Um, but we do we do ask that everybody um, be in official uh, field uniform uh, for dinner uh, in the evenings. Okay, if we bring our own food for Wednesday, uh, yes, we'll have room in the fridge in the walk-in. Uh, just make sure that your stuff is uh, labeled um, with your troop number and your campsite. Um, let's see. Uh, frontiersmen, will they earn any merit badges in that program, swimming, first aid? No, frontiersmen will not earn any merit badges. So frontiersmen has two classes, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Your scout only needs to be in one of those classes. And then so hypothetically, if the scout is in the morning class, they can still take merit badges in the afternoon. So if you wanted to get them in on swimming, first aid and say, uh, art or another merit badge in the afternoon, they still have the chance to get those merit badges as well. It's just, it's a one or it's a one day or the other, well, one half the day or the other half that they take frontiersmen and then the other half they can take merit badges. Okay, fantastic. And so I just put in the chat, um, our, our final question, uh, our theme for this summer is history of the old west um and so uh, i'm also about to drop in here um and uh christian's about to tell it to me so uh, if you want to write it down uh christian's email but i'm about to put my email and christian's email uh here in the chat so that you can you can have that um christian mosier okay. 222 at gmail. At gmail. Got it. <clears throat> okay. Um, so uh, we'll kind of do a last call. Um, are there any other questions? If you have questions, please drop them in the chat. Um, 
So we'll give we'll give everybody a minute. Christian, do you have something else? Yes. So I know they said it earlier, but water, water, water. Um, our number one day for dehydration issues is day one. So it's hardest for us to make sure that the scouts have water bottles if they show up and their water bottles are still packed in their stuff that's still packed in the trailer that is still in the campsite while we're hiking them around camp. So please make sure that those scouts come to camp with a water bottle in the vehicle with them because day one having somebody drop, it's gonna ruin the rest of the week for them. Um, I think that's all that I have on that. Okay. Can you talk about Eagle Trail? Um, so Eagle Trail or Frontiersman uh, is what we call it now, is just a program to help get new scouts from scout to first class. Um, you'll still need to do your uh, board of reviews with them, but it's just a good way to help scouts quickly advance up. And then uh, the other area that I think you may have also been talking about when you said Eagle Trail is our Life to Eagle. Um, that's just an area that has some merit badges that are Eagle required and some small fun ones to try to make that area a little, a little more entertaining. Okay. Will the troop need to know any info for history of the Old West? No, this will be uh, as accurate as humanly possible in my world of being historical accurate. There will be some a few tall tales uh, thrown in there just to keep everyone on their toes. But I mean, you don't have to do a book report or anything before you get there. Not yet anyway. Great. Thank you, Mike. Um, are there assigned check-in times? No, we do not have assigned check-in times. We do ask that everybody try and uh, be on site uh, between 1, 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. Uh, that way it gives your unit ample time to get through to your campsite, get checked in, uh, and go through the medical check, and uh, you've got time uh, for the uh, swim checks if you need swim checks. If, for whatever reason, uh, if you've got uh, we do encourage and our aquatics director encourages uh, for units that if you can do those those swim checks ahead of time, we will accept them. Um, so it does make it easier uh, for your check-in process if you've done that ahead of time. Um, okay, for Friday merit badges, can they earn both? So Friday, there aren't really any merit badges that are taught. That's a makeup day for merit badges that were taught earlier in we the week. Um, as for the twilight merit badges, those typically will take up the entire twilight, but um, I don't think it'll be possible for the scout to get both of them. They'll have to choose one or the other. Gotcha. Um, okay. Uh, Scott asks, uh, what's the earliest time we can check in? Well, um, if you um, really just want to get to camp, you know, super early, you can uh, show up uh, Saturday evening. Um, just realize that you will not, there won't be any dining hall or uh, program. Uh, it will just be uh, y'all in the campsite. Um and you still have to uh, go through the check-in process on Sunday. You're just able to do that uh, as soon as the, the clock strikes 1 uh, p.m. on Sunday. Um, so that is an option, uh, for especially for some of our units that are coming a distance. Uh, you know, if that's something that you want to do, that's fine. Um, but for everybody else that will be showing up on Sunday, uh, check-in starts at 1 p.m., Okay, uh, I don't see any other questions. Um, okay, I mean, yeah, just Jody or Joey, get with uh, um, get with Mike, uh, shoot him an email or or uh, give him a call, and y'all can work that out offline. So, um, okay. Well, seeing no other questions, uh, certainly 
Uh, reach out if you have anything that comes up between now and your week of summer camp. Um, and again, I'll just I'll just close this by saying thank you so much for camping with us this summer. Uh, we were really excited about having your troop uh, come and participate with us uh, this summer and uh, hope that we can make you raving fans of Courier Scout Ranch at Slippery Falls. Uh, please, again, reach out to us if there's anything that comes up um, and or technical issues with Black Pug or, or any of that. Um, and like I said, our contact information is on here uh, that you can see. Um, and have a great uh, rest of your Sunday. And we look, are so looking forward uh, to having you at camp at Kerr Scout Ranch at Slippery Falls. So y'all have a great one. Turned it off because I was trying to see what the headline on that.